cave so I would numb, out, numb it out. Like, I would forget what happened and I wouldn't think about it. But when I was in middle school, I met Andres um, in, the 11, um, in the sixth grade. Um, I know, we were like 12 years old. <laughs> Two little kids and um, you know, my mind was a very, very corrupted, you know, and I didn't understand. And in the eighth grade, we started dating. Um, and I wanted to be sexually active with him at age 14. And I remember that I kind of brought it up. And I never knew why. I wouldn't really pay attention because what happened to me when I was young, I just kind of just didn't even think about it. So, you know, we came together, we were being sexually active at the age of 14, and then obviously, you know, acting like grown-ups, you know, didn't care, we would sneak out at night. I lived in Long Beach Boulevard in Compton, and you know, there was a lot of prostitution, so when I would get out of my house at three in the morning, guys would try to pick me up because, you know, I was walking on the street um, trying to meet him up, and just to see kids that age now, it really just sees how much, um, Satan, you know, hurts us. So, um, we, I had my daughter, no, we went to high school, and in the 10th grade, I got pregnant, obviously. <laughs> I was like, how did this happen? <laughs> 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 but I ended up getting pregnant, and then from there, you know, we had this, like, beautiful romantic time, and, you know, we're acting like we we're married. I was fighting my mom because I wanted to be with him. She knew that I wasn't a virgin anymore, so, you know, obviously I lost her respect. Um, I almost fist fought my mom just to be with him because I was sneaking out at night. So, uh, obviously, I ended up getting pregnant, and that's when all the honeymoon stage ended. And um, when I had my daughter, reality hit. I was like, oh my God, this baby's crying all night. And, you know, Andres, um, me and Andres became very violent um, to the point where. After having my daughter, we were very physical two weeks after having my daughter and just really seeing he got into a gang. And um, just seeing that we, we had really messed up our lives, you know? A lot of people looked down on us, my family looked down on us, and we needed help. But we didn't know where to go, what to do, just praying. I prayed for Andres, I prayed for myself, I prayed for my daughter. And then from there, um, <laughs> um, Andres was just in and out of jail, and he met a disi disciple, uh, Manny Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're super grateful um, to meet him, and you know, Andres started studying the Bible. He didn't really take it serious until he went to jail, and then came back and was like, okay, I'm gonna take it serious. <laughs> But I was always following Andres, even though there was a lot of violence, I was always following him because, I don't know, we just grew up together. So I was always just seeing what he was doing from a distance. Sometimes I would be with him. And one day he calls me, he's like, I'm gonna get baptized. And I'm just like, what? Like, what, what do you mean you're gonna get baptized? So I go to his baptism, I get dressed really quick. Somebody picks me up and he gets baptized. And I'm like, well, I'm Pentecostal and I'll, I have it together, so I don't, I don't need help. <laughs> But really seeing um, his convict, like how much he had changed really convicted me. And I was like, um, I remember the sister, um, Charlotte, coming up to me being extremely persistent um, to study the Bible. And I was just like, no, I'm Pentecostal. You know, we do that tongue thing, you know, like we speak in tongues. And, you know, we feel the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but then she ended up studying with me, and it just changed my life. But with that being said, um, I really want to um, share the scripture with you guys. It's, um, it's in the same one, and you go to 14. It says, the grace of our Lord was poured out on me abund abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here's a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of who we were the worst. And from here, really seeing... Um, I felt when I got baptized that I got healed. But a lot of things I had numbed out. So a lot of things were exposed when I became a disciple and they were exposed through my actions and I'm gonna let my fiance share. Uh, 
Um, like Bridget was saying, um, after we became disciples, uh, within the first couple months, uh, we became immoral. Uh, and that kind of said uh, a life for us is not right with God. Uh, and as much as we repented, as much as we got open, uh, we fell again. Uh, and this went on for about three years uh, until the night of atonement, where we just got open, we shared our lives. Um, and that changed our lives. Um, for the past three months, I mean, there's nothing uh, that's been happening. Everything's been uh, open with God and our disciples, and God has blessed us. Um, here we are at this moment uh, in front of you guys, uh, being able to share communion this morning. Um, and, and bringing it back to the cross, uh, as we go back to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 16 says, but for that very reason, we were shown mercy that in us, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his unlimited patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. And that's what we receive. We receive God's love, God's mercy, God's patience. Throughout the past three years, um, he spared our lives. You know, we could have died. Uh, something could have happened to us. Um, we could have left our daughter without us to take care of her, but God showed us mercy. Um, and with that being said, I pray that if you guys are ever in a situation like us, there's no excuse if you have a kid together, uh, if you ever mess up, just be open, share your heart, talk to somebody, uh, get open, repent, and change your lives, and let God just really bless you and put you in a, in a, in a position where you're able to, to be right with God and, and be able to be blessed, and most importantly, be married if that's your heart. Uh, but if you drop down to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17 says, Now to the King, eternal, immortal, and visible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. And as we pray, um, I pray that we all bow our heads this moment um, as we get our hearts for communion. Uh, Father God, uh, thank you so much, God, for today, Lord. Uh, thank you for this opportunity, Father, to be here with our family, Father God, for the, with the people that we love so much, God. I pray that you forgive us, Father, for all our sins, God, that you forgive us as we forgive those who have sinned against us as well, Father. Um, I pray that if we're ever in sin, Father God, that we quickly repent, God, and that you allow for your love and your grace and your mercy, Father God, to be shown in our lives, Father. I pray that we never forget what you've done in our lives from the day we were born, God, to the day till now, God. I pray that we never give up, that we always hold on to you, Father God, and that forever and ever we live with you, Father. We love you so much, God. We thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.